Hey guys, welcome back. This is Flamehawk, and we are bringing you a new episode of East Meets West on WXCI 91.7 FM Danbury. And as always, I am the Gentleman Snark, and introducing again our third wheel here, but not in a bad way, DinoCon. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Now, I think the timeline might be a little bit messed up, because I just read... We're getting a Young Justice Season 3. Yep, it, it is finally confirmed. Warner Bros. Animation has decided to bring Young Justice 3 back for a third season. What was it that spurred the decision to do it? Was it a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe? Um, a lot of people think it has something to do with the fact that the show came back on Netflix. And a lot of people were speculating that maybe they were trying to get the show to be aired, like become a Netflix original show. The creator, whose name escapes me at the moment, said that it Greg was... Greg Wiseman? Yes, Greg Wiseman said it had absolutely... That, it, that wasn't the case, but he did encourage many of the fans to continue to watch the shows on Netflix to show that they're still a very high interest in the show. And apparently, it worked. So, there's no connection to Netflix. Wink, yeah. wink. Wink, wink. <laughs> Well, I'm curious as to whether or not it is uh, going to go to Netflix or not, um, how this will affect the direction of the show. Because I know that uh, even though a lot of shows on Netflix are very, very hot right now, I'm just curious as to whether or not this will affect its budget or not. That, it could probably, I don't know, I'm thinking it might bump it up because they see the uh, anticipation behind the show actually, so... And it again, could. with the whole ratings, with people continually watching the show, there's definitely some hype. So there's going to be a lot of people watching, giving it a look out. This might, I'm pretty sure this will help improve their chances, improve the ratings, money, all that. Well, I'm curious as to uh, where it is that they plan on taking the show. Yep. Because now that we have the possibility, well, it's not a possibility, it's a definite. Now that we have the Flash show, and now that we have the wonder woman coming out soon and now that we have the justice league movie i'm curious as to whether or not those movies are going to directly affect how young justice operates because i know that sometimes with you know the comics especially when they have a a new movie coming out many times the comics will try and be a little bit like the movies in order to draw in new readers mm -hmm. From what I heard, it almost never works, but... <laughs> it just makes the uh, fan base for the comics more angry about it, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, personally, I don't really think they'll go that route. Because, uh, cause, like, first off, a lot of people have a lot of issues with the DC movies already. You don't and, say. And for the uh, Young Justice, it seems like a lot of people liked what they did before. So it seems that while they're going to be showing like new arcs, new plot developments, I'm pretty sure like the whole atmosphere and the elements of it, the core elements of it will try to be relatively the same. Maybe they'll branch out a little bit, but I don't think they're going to try to take a page out of the DC movies. That could possibly be the worst thing they can do. No, the worst thing they could do if they decided to make it Young Justice Go. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I cannot finish that. You know what Teen Titans Go reminds me of? <laughs> Remember that um one Gundam show that was 3D and like all the Gundams were like 4D yes. tall? Yes. What was it called? Oh, I forgot. Oh, I they were remember. all chibis and stuff. So I remember. Yeah. One had the golden fist. There was the uh, red one with the two swords. And I think there was a. I think it was some British one that had like a Pegasus or whatnot. I remember Hold that. On. Bad memories. SD right there. Gundam. Yep. I remember. I. I, I no. As a kid, when I saw SD Gundam, I actually liked it. Well, to I'm not be, gonna lie, to be honest, I liked it. As, as a kid. SD yeah. stands for severely disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> How can disappointing? That would imply that you had high hopes for it to begin with. Exactly. After the first Gundam series and a few after that, it just went downhill. I mean, there is one little complaint slash question I did have because, like, the one thing that bothered me was like, are they robots or are they people? Because there was actually, I remember the there was a scene with the red one with the two swords and whatnot. He was eating rice balls. And I, even as a kid, I was questioning myself. I was like, wait, isn't he a robot? How is he eating this? Where do they go? Don't you mean donuts? <laughs> <laughs> jelly donuts. You know. Yeah, the jelly donuts. Mm. Uh, but uh, back on topic with uh, Young Justice. Well, actually, this is a very perfect segue. Uh, Young Justice isn't the only Cartoon Network cartoon that's getting a continuation. It isn't? No. 
the one we have been waiting for for years is officially coming back and by coming back i mean back to the past that's right samurai jack yes is yep. coming back everybody yes yeah. it has been confirmed yes and not just like in a jj abrams toying with it type of way uh, Cartoon Network has confirmed that they are, in fact, going to be bringing Samurai Jack uh, back and continuing. Uh, I don't know if I can say where they left off, but it's definitely going to be. I, I believe this one will, in fact, be a Netflix show. Um, I am not entirely sure. I uh, heard they were going to put it yep. on the Toonami. It is going to be on oh, yeah, Toonami. it's going to be on Toonami. My mistake. It was Where it belongs. It was announced like earlier this year with the little subtitle of 2016 however the producers have recently rebuffed that and pushed it back one year since toonami is now running with its intruder 3 marathon arc uh thing and in terms to answer the question of where samurai jack may like uh continue off of i do remember that after the cartoon network series end of the cartoon and the last episode there was when Samurai Jack was taking care of a baby and left the baby behind. But since that was the last episode on the TV series. But since then, there have been many comics of Samurai Jack going throughout his like many adventures. And I believe the last issue of that comic run had a much more older Samurai Jack. And the ending of the comic line kind of gave him a bittersweet tone to it, a, bit, a bittersweet ending. Like I believe Jack is still in the future, uh, like still trapped in the future, obviously. So when I see when they show some of the uh, drawings of what's going to be in store for this next Samurai Jack season, this is not going to be the whole censored TV show we were accustomed with as like kids or however old you were at the time. This one is going to be bare bones, going to be nitty. There will be blood, basically. There will be blood. Samurai like Jack is now using a gun. There's like they changed. They basically they're making this into a more serious and possibly a more adult themed cartoon. So uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Well, I think that there certainly is a uh, market for it, obviously because a lot of people really really like it. I he just like left a baby though. Uh, basically he found a he found a baby that was like almost being uh, I guess quote unquote eaten by three ogres and he's, uh, he he rescued what? the child. <laughs> He just left it more like Samurai Jerk. Oh, he didn't leave it. Like, he saved <laughs> it from the three... <laughs> he saved them from the three ogres, and at the end of the episode, he eventually finds the mother, but apparently the baby kind of has that angry scowl that Jack usually has whenever he's ready to fight. Aww, that's and basically, so cute. Yeah, and basically says that um he has the uh, warrior spirit and whatnot, and therefore, <laughs> you know, he just walks off into a distance so well i remember when samurai jack first came out and i remember because they were doing sort of behind the scenes stuff before it even came out mm -hmm. they were talking about how they were using new animation techniques specifically invented for this show namely the idea of having if you look at the characters one of the interesting things about them is that they don't have outlines like they'll have lines on the like when you draw them, it's almost like uh, South Park in that there's not a like a drawn line on the outside of them like a silhouette. Um, it's not like and and I know this is going to sound like slightly uh, weird of me noticing this, but if you look at the old episodes of Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls, like they have a thicker outline than mm -hmm. they do on the inside. Yes, it's, it, it was sort of like the reverse with Samurai Jack, and also how they did a lot of things with computers like the whole show was digitally animated mm -hmm. how the soundtrack uh had um it was hip-hop inspired how i rem i remember uh being really confused as to how basically everyone was a robot like it gave it gave samurai jack an excuse to be very very violent because it's like mm -hmm. oh no it's okay because everyone so he can slice people in half they're just robots it's kind of like how yeah. Germany has their video game censorship law. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, no, it's okay. They were a zombie, even though they could talk and run and stuff. Yeah. I exactly. I especially liked on how Samurai Jack had many homages to, like, other films and other stuff. Like, when he teamed up with the Spartans, clear shout out yeah. to 300 right there. And that was well, a nice episode. Well, yeah. And that's uh, the comic, not the 
movie, obviously, because they came out. But uh, th- that's one of the great things about being, you know, wa- watching Samurai Jack is because they had lots of homages. I remember a really good one, I think, uh, that the one you were talking about a little while ago with the baby mm-hmm. was meant to be, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, was meant to be sort of a lone wolf and cub type of scenario, mm-hmm. that famous manga series. Yes. Um, I know that there were also a couple of other references. As a matter of fact, that lone wolf and like cub reference too was also shown again when they had a flashback episode of Jack's childhood when he first actually they actually did see the characters. Yeah. From Lone Wolf and Cub was fighting off the samurais and Jack watches as a kid trying to tra- and after that he tried to like imitate the moves and whatnot. So definitely there was a reference there, a lot of references. Well, I think that it certainly is good to hear because. Um, one of my biggest problems with uh, Disney acquiring Marvel and uh, LucasArts or LucasFilms or whichever was that they basically had no incentive to come up with any sort of original films for boys. Um, mm. And by original, I mean like not based off of a pre-existing franchise. So mm. we weren't going to get another uh, Lion King or Hercules. Or Cars or yeah. anything. Well, like Cars that. Cars is Pixar. I'm, I mean, like... Oh, I mean, Disney it, specific. Yeah, Disney. Okay. Was, like, basically they had... Like, basically from now on, they're just going to make um, movies that are pretty much tangled and frozen. Like the new one about uh, the Polynesian girl uh, or whatever. Mo- Moana. Moana. Uh, yeah, I believe so, it's called that. Not My Polynesian is not the Yeah, girl. or Philip. But with things like, I, with Samurai Jack, I think it's really, really great for there to be, you know, original action uh, shows mm-hmm. for boys. Um, I mean, granted, you know, Young Justice has plenty of action in it, but it's neither original. Um, and if we're very honest with ourselves, like, uh, probably the uh, by a slim majority uh, fan base is uh, female. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah uh, I can definitely see that. Yep. Uh, probably the same thing with uh, Korra as well. Uh, so I think that, and this isn't trying to say like, you know, girls have no reason to watch Samurai Jack. It's just that, you know, it, it, has, it has so much boyish appeal mm-hmm. to it. And I think that's very, very important for Cartoon Network to do. Now that we're bringing up different, like, demographics and things, this country changed, and Hollywood is a little bit different now because of it. So, yes, we might be a little adjusted on what kind of films we see coming out in the next few years just based on the election. Yes, that's very true. Um, I kind of have a feeling that now that uh, Trump has been elected president... um, just uh, for those who are listening, it is currently November 10th, just in case if, you know, aliens find this uh, podcast and they want to know what happened. Uh, we're talking about um, superhero movies changing because of Donald Trump. No, but in all seriousness, though, it, it is very uh, not nerve wracking, but one has to wonder if whether or not Hollywood is going to look at this selection and yeah. think, oh, well, uh now that uh, we know that this is what America wants for a president, like, are we going to make more pro-America movies? Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, you know, during the Obama years, we certainly had a lot of uh, more diverse casts for various film franchises and TV shows, mm-hmm. whether they be uh based on race or gender or sexuality or country of origin. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, we've seen in... Uh, was that uh, Age of Ultron, yeah. them going in Europe and them focusing around the world a lot. So can we And then see in Civil War, they went into yeah. Wakanda. They went into Wakanda. And so are we going to see, like, more homegrown heroes now that the... Um, more America F. Yeah movies. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Captain Marvel can That's definitely a movie that go needs into a sequel, this. That's a sequel, by the way. That's a movie that needs... I want yeah. I want another uh, Team America World Police movie. There we go. Mm-hmm. So instead of taking on Kim Jong-un, or... Yeah, Un, who would uh, they just, take? Uh, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. There, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There you go. America's new threat. Kim uh, Kardashian. <laughs> a new t- threat. Attack of the booty. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That could be our potential future first lady there. Show some respect. Oh. Oh no! Hey, we, it would be like uh, um, 
what what was it? Uh, that's just that's an um, an idea from a movie like uh, Fifth Element and Majora's Mask, where we were going to be like attacked by just like this careening planet. And same thing with Guardians of the Galaxies too. Like the next movie is just like Kim Kardashian's butt just about to like crash into the earth. That would be that would be. Oof. So it's like Mario's Mario's ground pound times infinity, <laughs> <laughs> essentially. Or, or Princess Peaches, rather. The mass of the ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting that you brought the uh, fifth element because the... the Valerian. Th- yes. Yeah. Yes, there we go. That movie looks pretty good. Yeah. Forget the election. You're all tired yeah, of hearing about the about election. That. Yeah. But to be honest, I had no idea what this was until DinoCon actually brought this up. And I didn't know what it was until YouTube did a survey before I wanted to watch um, a funny uh, compilation video of uh, Russians doing silly stuff in their backyards. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, (laughs) what, uh, have you heard of any of these movies? And I was like, Dunkirk, yes. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, yes. Logan, yes. And it was like, Valerian. It was like, is, is, isn't that like a, a, a prescription drug? Like, what, <laughs> what? What can Valerian do for you? Yeah. <laughs> if it lasts for longer than four hours, see a doctor. Well, if any movie lasts longer for four hours. <laughs> but um, no, it's actually based off of a, uh, a, a supposedly a groundbreaking uh, graph, uh, series of comics uh, from a French creator. Um, whose name I'm not going to bother. Here, Flamehawk, why don't you try and pronounce that name for us? Pierre Christin. And illustrated by Jean-Claude Van Damme. Just kidding. No, Jean-Claude... <laughs> Miserly. Miserly. <laughs> yeah, my French isn't nearly as good to even attempt. So, <laughs> so it was uh, illustrated by Jean-Claude Van Damme. There we go. Yeah. He, he held uh, the pencil between his toes and just kicked the paper. Yep, he punched the pencil until it put out this amazing work. So, yeah, what Valerian really is, it seems to be a very interesting sci-fi film. So, for those of you who don't know what it is, I suggest you check it out, especially if you're a fan of sci-fi films, because I feel as if this one really has a lot to deliver here. Yeah, like, Mm. not, like, I feel like this might be a sleeper hit, in that uh, I don't it's funny. I've only known about the movie for an hour, and I already like am rooting for it because it it's it, it is sci-fi. It's a hard sci-fi movie, very much like uh, Mass Effect. In fact, the guy who's directing it, Luc Besson, also directed The Fifth Element. But what I like about it is that it's very very imaginative. Mm-hmm. Like it almost like it's fan it's science fiction, but it has a very um, organic feel to it it almost feels like a fantasy movie mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and that's something i really appreciate i just hope it doesn't end up like sucker punch where mm-hmm. it ends up being just nothing but visuals all style and no substance yep. yeah i don't know what sucker punch was i don't get why people like it so much mm-hmm. but uh, i i remember seeing it like by myself in the theater mm-hmm. and uh i was like oh this is gonna be a really cool movie but then it was like hey you girls Go wash the dishes, and I'm like, this isn't about samurai robots. Yeah, what the talking about is samurai this Jack about? again? <laughs> and when it's all just in her head, yay! Yeah, that was <laughs> but, like Inside Out, but yeah. more confusing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that this movie um, it it doesn't come out until summer 2017, mm-hmm. uh, July. So I think that it'll be in kind. It's it's kind of uh, in a sweet spot because of the fact that uh, it'll be it'll have a lot of competition and competition mm. raises awareness of it like if it's sandwiched between two really really big movies people might yep. uh, look at it and go oh uh, so and so movie is sold out uh, let's go watch Valerian and then they see it and they're like hey that was actually pretty pretty good since it's scheduled in July we can see that the production companies Europe Corp and Lionsgate actually have faith in this, especially since they're putting back 180 million behind it. Ooh, yeah. Let's hope this become a box office nightmare. Well, I, th- <laughs> <laughs> well, because it is uh, done by Lionsgate, mm-hmm. which was recently acquired by China. 
uh, you're not going to escape it, folks. Sorry. But uh, so they'll probably want to make a big push to uh, broadcast it throughout China. Mm -hmm. um, I think also because it has a French director and it's based off of a French comic book series that it'll probably have a very strong European market. Yep. Apparently this comic book series that it's based off of dates back all the way to the 70s. So Damn. Yeah, so for all we know, it probably it might have a very big oh. following Yikes. in Europe. Going back to November 1967. Wow. That's even more than I thought, but... Uh, uh, the comic has ended, right? It ended in January 2010. That's, wow! That's still long. Well, to be honest, it probably took a few years off, gapped, rebo like reboots, like how American comic works. You don't see a character for a while unless they're like a main person, and then they come back at the next uh, rebirth. And it's like, oh, hey, look what we did to Amanda War Walker. We made her fat again. It's basically it. When no one asks for that, but okay. Every actually, everyone asks for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, but uh, back on track with uh, the movie, I, kn I know that we're kind of talking about this um, probably a lot more than uh, maybe a lot of other people are. But, you know, I have a feeling that this you know, like I said, might turn out to be a sleeper hit. It's got Dane DeHaan, who was in um, Amazing Spider-Man 2, mm -hmm. and Cara Delevingne, who is and like... And in the Suicide Squad. Yes. She was also in a Taylor Swift video. She's also a super... She's basically like a living meme. Uh, and so then you've also got Rihanna. Mm -hmm. um, As Bubble. Yeah, I... Like I said, I don't know who any of these characters are. And uh, Clive Owen is in it. John Goodman is in it. Yep. I think John Goodman might be one of like, the head monsters. Yeah, he might play one of the aliens. He usually is like, that kind of like voice actor role. He has a very, very great voice. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I think that this might prove to be uh, a cult classic, maybe. The um, thing that's interesting behind this is I was researching it, and it actually says that this work has gone on to actually influence such things as Star Wars, The Fifth Element, and Avatar. So, since it's being worked on by the same people who did Fifth Element... It's so, we're looking at the origin of many of the main sci-fi stuff? Exactly. That's what it looks to be here. Okay. So, pretty interesting right there. They got a lot... Of, they got big shoes to fill now, now they said that. And plus, the director and the producer actually have a lot of things in common. Are they both French? They are married. V Virgin Besson Chilia and Luc Benson Besson. Besson are married. So, you know, there's going to be a close uh, camaraderie and there's going to be uh, not too many fights between the direction of the movie, which has plagued many movies recently. Unfortunately. Yeah. Like Deadpool 2. Yeah. Speaking of Deadpool 2, Deadpool 3... What? <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. They're already going there. Deadpool 3 is looking to bring in the X-Force. Okay, okay. First off, we didn't even get a proper trailer of Deadpool 2. They, I don't even know what Deadpool 2 is doing. Yeah. They, they, they kind of got to slow, they gotta they slow down slow just down. a little bit here because they're falling into the DC line of things. They need to, they need to calm down. They just, need to slow down. But just a little bit. However, if you look at it, I mean, the X-Force is kind of coming together because Domino is going to be in number two. You have okay. Psylocke in the new X-Men series. And there's a lot of other characters. Is, is that Cable going to be in it? Yes, Cable will be in the second one, Deadpool yeah. 2. Yeah, Cable will be in the... Oh, Deadpool. no, I meant like in... Will he be in X-Force? Because I, I already knew that he was going to be in Deadpool 2, but I'm just curious as to like whether or not he's going to be in... Uh, I personally don't know. It I could be no possible considering Fox owns... X Force and Deadpool, so it is a possibility. I doubt they're gonna try to add in that many new characters. So, yeah, I'd assume they'd probably try to bring in as many as the uh, they have right now. And the other reason why I doubt it is because Deadpool's supposed to be kind of like it's owned by Fox, so it is connected to the X Men, but he's kind of like on the outside, so mm. to speak. Like he's just the one that main supposed to crack jokes of the main series, while the main series just goes on in its own time. The thing that is interesting is that X-23 and Wolverine are both in the X-Force. So when you think of it, 
time dilation. It might have something to do together with Logan. Nothing, nothing cemented yet, but maybe X-23 might be in Deadpool 3. Uh, well, I, I don't know how I feel about that. I wouldn't that mean that Deadpool 3 is going to take place in the far future? It might, but, uh... Yeah, to be this, honest, this, who, this know, is, this who knows where this is going I'm at this point. I'm already not sure if I'm I, liking this. I'm all, I'm just going to I'm just what I'm suspecting here is again, Deadpool is kind of his own thing with that Fox zoning like he does his own thing. Yes, you might see like a couple of shout outs and subtle hints that he's in that like, he's connected to the main series, but at the end of the day he's kind of doing his own thing. So if we do see X-23, it might be through some random happenstance that they probably don't won't explain because it's Deadpool. They don't really need to explain it nope. much. So I'm guessing that's what they're going to go for here. But again, got to slow down because already even I have to agree with Dinocon, I'm not kind of liking where this is going so far. One of the reasons why I was really looking forward to Logan was one of the reasons why I was really, really looking forward to the Wolverine mm. is because it was very, very much a solo adventure. Mm -hmm. Granted, um, there were plenty of other X-Men characters in it as well as in Logan, but yeah. I kind of liked the idea of, you know, they're not being like uh, tagalongs. Like the closest thing to a tagalong in, in Logan is Professor X. Like, I was kind of happy that in the trailer and in the cast reveal for the movie, I didn't see anything about uh, Beast or Cyclops or... Mm -hmm. I mean, we might have flashbacks of them and they might get uncredited cameo roles or something. I don't know. But uh, I was kind of looking forward to, like, it just being about Logan. And, th and the same thing I feel might... Like, if uh, they try and, like, peek into... Um, Logan or whatever if like I don't know I mean I really like Deadpool he's funny and all that but um, I don't want it to be like in the comics where they basically just tried to shoehorn Deadpool into every single thing they're like look kids mm -hmm. you know you know Deadpool is uh, everywhere now isn't that great and I'm like well it feels like uh, butter spread too over too much bread mm -hmm. you know it's yeah the more you force it the more it's just not gonna work Mm -mm. Yeah, and not everyone can write Deadpool mm. really well. No, no, that is a definite fact. Not everyone can pull that off. And then when you start adding more serious characters to it... I mean, the main reason why I think that Deadpool 2 would also be good is because they, uh, they have Cable yeah, and Domino. Cable... Uh, yeah, Cable and Domino, who have always been notorious for able to, like, bounce off of Deadpool's craziness and whatnot. So, they can work with good character dynamics in number two. Therefore, I personally believe this second one will be a decent film. However, with Deadpool 3, not only are you dealing with a more, like, potentially a larger cast of characters here, we also got to figure out about screen time. Like, I feel as if Deadpool is supposed to make the movie here, and the characters are kind of supposed to help support that in a way bounce off of him to either make him look crazier and funnier but when you have too many characters there you're gonna have a lot of instances where the characters that aren't deadpool are gonna kind of have a, mu a good portion of the scenes by themselves and kind of like develop each character individual individually in a sense unless they're all gonna die which can very well happen in Deadpool film. So I feel as if in Deadpool 3, if we do get the X-Force in X-23, we won't see that much of Deadpool, which unfortunately might cause the movie to tank, in my honest opinion. And, well, one would also have to ask, like, is it going to be X-23 as she is now? Is it going to mm -hmm. be an older X-23? Um, I don't know. It, it's really frustrating. Although, you know which Marvel movie we saw that did not disappoint in the least? Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. Yay. We all did it at the same time. I'm so proud of you guys. We did it, fam. No, but seriously, though. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Strange. A very, uh... I, I, I think the movie was good. I, I like the movie. I would here. give it a, probably around a 4 out of 5. Yeah. Just because if you look at it, there's not many things that were that disappointing. I mean, they did introduce a whole new side of Marvel, which is going to be focusing on the more s spiritual side and like supernatural which Doctor Strange can definitely bring up. 
the thing there is one thing that did surprise me when and uh, keep in mind we're gonna have spoilers here mm -hmm. yes the thing that did the surprise me week, so. about Sorry. the movie was that it was kind of short didn't, like didn't you guys kind of feel yeah. as if the movie felt a bit short than usual a little a little yeah a little bit. um but uh what it, it certainly managed to compact a lot mm -hmm. in um a shorter amount of time i gotta say you know going back to what you were saying about it introducing a new side of uh marvel what guardians of the galaxy did for cosmic marvel this mm -hmm. did to uh paranormal marvel exactly. or para marvel or whatever i really really appreciated how they made sure to excuse me not make it uh too uh hokey or too yeah. kitschy, like too mm -hmm. stereotypical magic, like let's say uh, uh, go, um, Harry Potter does. Like no, like it's it's lots of you know strange depictions of how magic functions and operates. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not a pun. Yeah, the thing I do like about the movie is that they didn't spend too long on Strange's origin in terms right. of how he got into the accident and lost his hands. They didn't spend too much time. They spent enough time, but they still kept up the pace. They just said, okay, here's what happened to him. Let's just move on. Let's just move on to the part where he trains. The one reason I do not like that is because they totally omitted his sister, who had a big reason on why he joined the medical field and why he has a big disappointment and fear of failure. Well, maybe they can um, explore that in the sequel, which is True. definitely uh, hinted at. Definitely possible. Um, but, yeah, ah. I, do, I do agree that, you know, it, and this mm. is especially, I am actually finding myself agreeing with you with every second simply because of the fact that if you'd seen the movie, you'd probably agree that the love interest that we got in the movie was mm. probably less important than I honestly, I would say Jane Foster from Thor. Yeah. I honestly feel like this one who's supposed to be the night nurse in the MCEU the movies yeah. Marvel movies felt forced as heck. I mean even yeah. Claire in the Netflix series that seemed a bit more natural to me than in this movie. It really did seem forced. Speaking of love interest for Doctor Strange now that we have Dormanu Dermanu Dormammu, Dormammu in this series now and in this franchise, we can bring in Doctor Strange's wife slash ex-wife, Clea, who has a big, big role on him in the comics. Mm. Oh, yeah, the white-haired lady. Yep. Um, that's actually very interesting, considering how the lady that we got in the movie was not her. Uh, what was the name of, of the girl that we got? Uh, Night Nurse. Well, yeah, but, like, what was her name uh, no like the girl in the movie uh I don't is that remember. his love interest or yeah the love interest in the movie i have see that's just how forgettable she was as a character not gonna lie i feel like they could have replaced her with um the other guy who's in the movie the one who uh uh the guy who he argues with whose name i also moto, forget the black guy moto no the other doctor uh, the one who got all of the treats in the vending machine. Oh, uh, his name also escapes yeah. me. Yeah, but I feel like if they had just replaced uh, the lady with him, like, and just made him, like, a friend or a colleague or someone who studied with him in medical school or something, mm -hmm. I think that would have been uh, just as good. And I think that it... Or actually, you know what I think it is? Christine I, Palmer. Christine Palmer. That's it. Okay. I... Like I said, it's like, who knows? But um, they did the exact same thing with, um, and I know I'm going to get a bit of flack for saying this, but they did the exact same thing with Twilight because they know that Benedict Cumberbatch has a very, very large female fan base. Mm. Yeah. So if they have a girl there who's all like kissy kissy with, you know, Doctor Strange, that's going to be alienating for female fans. So they made the love interest purposefully uh, boring and average to make yeah. it easier for female fans to sort of like self insert themselves. That's probably yeah. a good point. Yeah. Disgust that is a good point. <laughs> Disgust me just Sorry. a little. <laughs> just a little bit. Disgust me.
like if they had just made it like uh like if they had removed her and then just had you know the guy there then it probably would have made for a very interesting uh uh, character development for Strange because then he'd be like, wow, I treat my friends and colleagues like crap, you know, after experiencing my time uh, learning at this seminary or whatever it is, this mo or monastery rather. Like, I should treat, you know, my coworkers better. And then in comes the flying fiction. Yeah, oh, yeah. right? Oh, God. The, Gross. One, the one thing I'm not really that satisfied about is how Baron Modo, Mordo, Mordo, just kind of took an evil role out of nothing. I mean, yes, he's evil in the comics, but it was kind of seemed forced from his fall from a good guy See, but the thing to is though, the bad guy. Not only did it seem forced, just because of the way that, oh, you're using the magical side to disrupt reality and the natural order. Yes, that is true, but that was like in the last few seconds where he just kind of came out of nowhere and just said, oh, I'm taking your power. I'm going to kill every wizard or warlock there is. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, not only do I think the him turning bad seemed forced, it came out of nothing. Like it kind of came out of nothing. It's like it's like he realized he was late to turn evil. He's like, oh shoot, yeah, like, I forgot. I have to you, be evil now. How do you go from like, okay, we have to respect the natural laws, and then you turn right back around, and then you just do some evil, then you do some evil stuff by taking this dude's power, so he's back to being a cripple. Like, well, I th that well, transition. I, <laughs> well, I think that, um, and uh, you know, I'm gonna be a devil's advocate here. Um, I think that the some of the best kinds of villains are the ones who genuinely think that what they're doing is the right and moral mm -hmm. thing to do. Yep. So Baron Mordo, you know, his whole thing was like he got really sort of red-pilled, if you will, by the fact that the Ancient One mm -hmm. was... Oh, uh, reminder, spoilers. Uh, the Ancient One was actually using a little bit of uh, black magic to uh, break the rules, to maintain the rules, so to speak. Mm. And he was really, really disenfranchised. And so now he's realizing, you know what, there's just too many sorcerers anyway. Yep. Like, I don't know if he plans on killing Doctor Strange because they did so well together. They worked so well together. But he's probably going to end up going, like, around to find other sorcerers who just simply aren't doing much mm -hmm. being like you know what we're d we're downsizing now so we're gonna have to let you go or you're gonna have to fire you you're fired <laughs> but uh yeah and so dr strange is gonna probably come in and be like hey you you can't do that that's mm -hmm. a bad thing and he's like no i'm helping Leave me alone. Exactly. I mean, the thing, though, is that in the movie, they were kind of hinted that, and mind you, I did not read the comics, so I did not know that Mordo, Mordo would already be a bad guy. But the way the movie kind of hinted at it with the Ancient One speaking to Strange in, like, the last length, like, the last seconds of her life, kind of saying, like, I thought they would do some kind of Marvel team-up thing that would be, like, a continuation, like, I don't know, some sort of Batman or Robin type of thing where they would always be working together in future movies. And I kind of felt, that's why to me it was so strange that he turned around yeah, and became a strange. bad guy. We have to stop. We got to <laughs> No pun intended. It's time to stop. But, um, it, well, it's great that you brought up the idea of team-ups because if you saw the uh, mid-credits bonus scene, which you should have because we're talking about the end-credits bonus scene, so it would be kind of weird. Called it, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, he did actually. Yep. Um, we yep. were we were making bets on uh, who was going to show up, who was going to cameo first mm -hmm. in this movie. Um, uh, Gentleman Snark, who was it that? Uh, I said Black Panther. Yes, and I said uh, Iron Fist. And I said Thor because the magical side and Asgard seemed to go fit fitting together. Yeah, um, and yeah, so we now had uh, a really really great interaction between Strange and Thor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's probably likely that Strange is going to be in Ragnarok now. N we're omitting one big part. They put in the time gem as an infinity stone for the Eye of, of Agmodo. Mm -hmm. So now we have four out of the five. So we had um, the one in the Tesseract, which was... Which one was that? The 
successor, I don't even know. Well, yeah, in the um, the in the Infinity Cube or whatever it is from that, Captain that be, America. That would be space. Yeah, that space. one was space. I know the one from Guardians, I believe, was power. Yeah, the purple one. Yeah, that one was power. Space gem is Tesseract. The scepter of Loki is the mind gem. Yes. The orb, as we already has meant have mentioned, is the power, and the reality is the aether, as we've seen in the dark world of Thor. Right. And now the time gem was in the is, eye of Agamotto. Exactly. Now, now oh, go ahead. Soul, soul gem. One more. Ooh. Uh well we still got a few we still got a few Marvel movies coming up here because let's see we like how many movies are coming out I think Homecoming should be coming out before Infinity Wars There's and, no way they're going to put that in Homecoming Yeah I think though The only good, other one I could think of is maybe Black Panther but I'm not sure when that one comes Maybe either Black Panther or possibly um Iron Fist Mm, I doubt they would. Yeah, because that's a net. That's, that's going to be a Netflix series. I don't think they'd show an Infinity Stone in. Well, it's the Soul Gem though, and I mm. think that for a character like Iron Fist, if he's going to be going to Kun Loon or mm. um, no, what's the name of the magical? Yeah, Kun Loon, right? Yeah. Mm. I think that would be a very you know sensible place because it's about martial arts. So I think that mm. would probably be make sense. Plus, it would help mm. uh, drive more attention mm. to the show. If that was a movie, I totally agree with you, but. Because the Netflix series, I kind of got to pull off and say I, I doubt that's going to happen. But we have, in 2017, Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man Homecoming, Thor Ragnarok, 2018, Black Panther, and then we have the Infinity Wars coming May 4th, then Ant-Man, July. Wait, I saw two uh, dates for Infinity Wars. Yep, part one and part two. So we split over two parts. <sighs> So we not. Re- I not really, really sure. think it's gonna be the Black Panther. Or Captain Marvel. I really think it's gonna be Black Panther that we see the last one, the last one in. If it's not Black Panther, then it has to be Captain Marvel because they already showed it in Guardians, so I think it'd be redundant. And to show it in Spider-Man: Homecoming, eh, it's a bit of a stretch in my opinion. Well, Thor Ragnarok maybe. Well, then it, you have. But two then they Thor already movies. did that in Dark and uh, Dark World. They. Well, if you look at this, they brought up the Tesseract, they brought up the Scepter, and they brought up the... Well, yeah, but they were in different franchises, though. That's a good point, but everything's kind of been relating back to Thor. So, safe bet for right now is that, but when you think of how jam-packed Ragnarok is going to be, I don't know about that. Uh, what's the what is the what's the uh, last Infinity Gem again? Is it space? The, no, the it Soul Gem. Soul, soul Gem. Sure. I I'm uh now nah, I'm I'm convinced. I definitely think Black pa- Black Panther might have something to do with it. Because especially when you look in the comics and the whole ritual, the spirit of the Panther, there's definitely yeah, room. Uh, yeah. Definitely room for that in Black Panther. Definitely. All right. Room. Yeah, I can see that like being like some kind of like royal jewel or something. Yeah. Kind of, the yeah. crown jewels of Wakanda. Yeah, I can definitely see room for that. If not, then yep. Captain Marvel is the only one left. Mm. Because, I mean, it's because it's before part two. Is it? Isn't it before part two? It or? is. It is right before yeah. part two. It's right before part two, so I guess so. I guess I guess it's part to do that kind of drum up anticipation because maybe in the first part, Thanos finds a way to collect the first uh, four, mm. but then the fifth one, like, that could be a cliffhanger, and then that's when we see Captain Marvel. Like, I'm. I'm just reaching here. Or they could do it in Guardians of the Galaxy number two and have like a soul gem be kind of like a James Brown mixtape. Yeah, <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> and and <laughs> I.E., come and get your gem. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I think uh, Snark does bring up a good point about Black Panther. Like, if this is something like a soul gem, then. Um, it definitely does imply that it will have something that is vaguely spiritual. So I mm. think that limits it to either Doctor Strange, Black Panther, or I'd still hold out for Iron Fist. You never know. And th- another thing for Black Panther, th- two of these are basically uh, introduction and backstories for Captain Marvel and Spider-Man. 
So I doubt they would convolute that with the, with anything gem related. One of the good things about the Black Panther movie, mm. um, or rather I should say one of the advantages that it has, is that it's already established its origin story in exactly. Avengers Age of Ultron. Yep. So, I mean, um, Civil War. Mm-hmm. So, or no. It, was no it? It, it, yeah, he was in Civil War. Age, yeah. of, Age of Ultron, they brought up Wakanda. Yeah. And in Civil War, they actually introduced Black, Black Panther. Panther so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that uh, Black Panther definitely has an advantage because uh, when is it coming out? Black Panther is scheduled to release on February 16th, 2018. During Black History Month, of course. Oh, yeah, um, that actually makes fitting. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that makes... Well, I know a, I'm seeing that. Well, <laughs> it, well, actually, it also has an advantage because it's coming out um, not just during Black History Month, but it also during the winter. Mm-hmm. Which is very great because Black Panther um, does like a uh, Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. You know, Doctor Strange came out in October, so those are good months to do it because since they're lesser known characters, you have a little space where there are like no other. There's like no other competition. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, I'm burping all the time. Um, where there's like no other competition. Mm-hmm. So, you know, studios don't have to worry too much about other movies taking away attention from them. Yep, that yeah. is a good point. Oh, well, speaking of uh, movies that uh, require a lot of uh, audience attention, when we were going to see Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. uh, there was a sort of uh, meta, co- meta commercial uh, for the oh, upcoming yep. uh, Ghost in the Shell. Mm-hmm. And I it, have to say, when they kind of did the whole bleeping and the whole, like the whole commercial, the, yeah, the glitching commercial interruption, that was a nice touch, a very nice touch in my opinion. Yeah, because it definitely alluded to the fact that we are going to be, it, it's definitely going to have a very uh, Blade Runner type of feel to it, I'm thinking, uh, simply because both Blade Runner and Ghost in the Shell draw inspiration from Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Um, I know a lot of uh, fans are really, really nervous, namely because of the fact that the uh, movie industry does not have, or Hollywood, I should say, does not have a very good track record with adapting anime to the uh, silver screen. Nah. My personal exception would be Speed Racer. I thought it was very, very fun. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think that this one <laughs> I don't want to be I don't want to just keep saying like oh this is going to be the one you guys oh it's going to be this one I'm sure of it but I, I do I do honestly think that it has a lot of crossover appeal I do think that you know having st- starring Scarlett Johansson will probably help um, in attracting the normies because uh, you know it'll it'll make it seem much more uh, normal. Plus, it's you know I don't want to sound like too. Uh, it's it, it's got you know a, a, a strong female lead character. Uh, so femme fatales for the win. Yes. So I think that that will also probably give it a lot of uh, attention as well. Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh, female main characters. Exactly. Speaking of female thi- main characters. You almost said female things. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We have a new trailer for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. This trailer came out specifically in China. Though we have seen many of the same scenes in this clip, the trailer remains highly anticipated due to the new footage and the clearer look of Darth Vader. So that is the main importance of why this Star Wars trailer is getting the hype it is getting. I think that, you know, Rogue One is probably going to be a sort of litmus test going forward because this isn't episode eight. This mm-hmm. is, you know, sort of a... a spin off. Yeah, a spin off, a side story. And while Star Wars Episode Seven was very, very incredible, mm-hmm. one could say that the reason why it was so very uh, successful is because it was. A new Star Wars movie. That, and it was a remake of the first one. <laughs> so, 
this this particular one is going to really test to see mm -hmm. whether or not um, all of the uh, hype for Star Wars 7 is going to transfer over because this is going to be coming, you know, shortly after the last one did. And yep. gosh, the, what was it? One year after. Yeah. Came out last December. This one's coming out this December. They're going to have a new trend of December, Christmas time. Grab your lightsaber and go around the Christmas tree because it's Star Wars season. Oh, any excuse to grab my lightsaber. Oh, yeah, I love grabbing Especially my lightsaber. Especially in public. Oh, yeah. Hopefully there aren't too many kids around. LOL. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pee Wee Herman knows that all too well. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is crack. Yay! Well, <laughs> you said the second word. Yeah. I that I would like. Oh wait, did any of you guys see the new uh, Pee Wee Herman movie? I didn't see it. I actually did. The one with Joe Maggiello. Or yeah. What? It was not terrible. Okay. It was not terrible. I can live with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm. I got. A, I got another question. What is up with Darth Vader popping up everywhere? Well, didn't he kind of, you know, die? Put. Well, he died. But this is going back to when the. Death Star was at the glory days, and right before it got blown up. So, we're still in that time frame of the... In between the... Oh, I see, In between I see. the originals and the, uh, you know, remakes. Or not remakes, the... Uh, Who's playing Darth Vader? James Earl Jones is, re is recomprising his role. Yeah, so, uh, but like, who's in the suit, though? Who is Darth Vader will be played by Spencer Wild Wilding. Yeah, it looks like, or rather by that, it means that he's going to be in the suit. It's exactly. not. Yeah, he's not like going to be filming anybody. He's also or been voicing anybody. Kind. He's also been kind of played for more of these behind-the-scenes role because we've seen him in many times actually. When we see him in last year's Victor Frankenstein as the Frankenstein's monster. Oh, wow. He was that was a, him? He was a guard in Guardians of the Galaxy. And he's also had a few different... He was the motion captor for Kilowog. Yep, Kilowog. He also has been in Doctor Who. He was in Harry Potter. How tall is he? He is 6'7". <laughs> That's a tall guy. Damn. That is a tall guy. I do not want to fuck with him. <laughs> I find it funny how he goes from playing Frankenstein's monster to Darth Vader. Mm. It's like uh, not a very uh, large leap there. True. Well, I remember um, seeing. A, I, I'm glad to know. I'm glad to hear that it takes place um, in uh, in a spirit in a spinoff type of story that takes place like when was it before Return of the Jedi or Return. Before Empire Strikes Strikes Back, it was before Episode. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. Okay, well, this is going to be very interesting now because this sets up whether or not they can get away with doing uh, in between quills. Mm -hmm. um, like if they want to do a movie specifically about Boba Fett, I know that they're doing the Han Solo prequel. Mm -hmm. I kind of hope they don't do that because we've kind of had enough of that already. Like, can we get to the new stuff already? It, well, they're doing one each year. Uh, so, basically, it's going to be more in-depth version of Star Wars, which is nice because you don't really get an in-depth version of Star Wars unless you follow the Clone Wars or Rebels. My only thing is that if they do all these, like, in-between prequels type of things, is that they it's actually... Not, it's not if. It's that they are doing it. Okay, but since they're going to do it, at least let it add to the whole new to the new stuff. Like, when Episode Eight finally comes out, let at least, like, all the prequels they did actually build up on that. Well, it's building to the story and every... It's building to the story, like, together, so I guess it's going... Otherwise, I personally would just feel like this is just a whole one giant cash grab. And speaking of giant cash grabs, Pacific Rim 2 is now back from the grave. Hey! And they are, they have actually started to film. Who wait, asked? Wait, wait, already? Yep. Yeah. They have started to film. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Who the heck asked for a sequel? 
Yeah. What what can they do? What I mean, like, it was supposed to end with the first film. What happened? <laughs> more gi- more giant rock'em shock'em robots. I got. They uh, blew up the crater with all the kaiju's. What the heck? Oh, maybe they'll go the G Gundam route and just be like, okay, well now that all these countries have a giant robot, what are we gonna do? Well, I guess we're gonna have all the countries fight each other with giant robots. Yeah, sure. That sounds good, like uh, Olympics, but uh, yeah, robot Olympics. Can I enter Megas XLR in there? <laughs> Good enough. The most American giant robot possible. Its head is literally a car. A, a car. <laughs> hey, yeah. that Siri was awesome. Bring it back. Yeah. yeah, I like how it starred Guy Fieri. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, I gotta say, I feel like uh, Pacific Rim is sort of like uh, this. Is going back to what I was saying about Valeri and how yeah. it was sort of like a sleeper hit, and then it ended up sort of being a cult classic yeah. you want to know something really frustrating mm-hmm. though the do you want to know why uh pacific rim didn't make as much money as people wanted to why is that because uh grown-ups 2 actually took a lot of revenue away from it wow wah, wah, wah. thank you adam sandler after 2010 you <laughs> your career kind of died click was good though Click was good. I cried. I'm, not, I'm, ashamed to, I'm not ashamed to say it. Pixels was not terrible. I actually enjoyed it. I don't. Uh, Click, I'll agree. Click was good, but Pixels, I haven't watched it, but... If you haven't watched it, don't and knock kudos, it. It just didn't look that appealing to me, and personally. And kudos to Rain Over Me for featuring a scene in which mm. they bond over playing Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. Speaking of things that don't need a sequel... The thing that's also interesting with this is Pacific Rim was always kind of a summer rock'em shock'em like big uh, movie just for kind of a summer fun. This is being placed in February 2018. Can I ask why that that sounds like a terrible date for this kind of movie? Is it going to be coming out like the same date as Black Panther? That is two weeks after. They're okay. not, nah, nah, Black Panther's stealing all their money again. Except this time for an actual good movie. Well, Hopefully. <laughs> well, you know, I think that I don't think it will hurt too much simply because they're both the kinds of movies that, you know, the people who are going to see Black Panther are probably the same people who are going to want to see Pacific, um, Pacific mm-hmm. Rim 2. In fact, I would venture to say that not only do they both have the same audience, but I would not be surprised if people would say would see both movies in one day or in yeah. one weekend True. or repeats or repeat. Uh, I, I will say a repeat for uh, Black Panther, but honestly, I don't see people going to repeat P- Pacific Rim 2. I, I don't see that. Mm. Well, it all depends on, you know, what kinds of things occur. I, I remember a lot of people were going to see repeat, uh, see second uh, viewings of Pacific Rim because they wanted to support it. Like, they really wanted to help it make mm. money. True. I guess in a way they kind of helped and got their wish because it's so, getting a sequel. Yeah, the fans definitely reached out to him and Guillermo del Toro definitely stuck with him, which is a nice view. But Ma- now we just have to push him towards making that in the mountains of madness movie. Exactly, and Hellboy three, and Hellboy three. My goodness. Put him in Mexico already. Although I don't think we can, considering the president. <laughs> you can't get past the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th- oh my gosh. What if? <laughs> what if like when they make Hellboy three, they'll actually like have to have like a shot of the wall, and wow. then the- and then wow. it'll be like. No, because the last one took place how many years ago? Like, two thousand nine. Yeah. Yeah, somewhere around there, two thousand ten. I think. So it would be yeah. like, yeah, it would be like almost ten years later, mm-hmm. and like they're gonna pretend mm-hmm. that. It... Now, now that we're on this subject, though, there's something that I really, something that I really gotta think about because when you think of, because going back to the previous topic, the first topic on how. The whole election might influence Hollywood. But the other thing I want to think about is, who are they? Who, what kind of people are they going to get to play the president now? Because you know how in movies they would kind of have cameos of the president, and before they usually just be a black guy. Now that we have Donald, Tr- 
now that we have Trump, I'm curious to see who they would get to act as Trump in these. Or not Trump specifically, but someone who's like kind of like Trump. John Goodman. Yeah. Ish. Nah, John Goodman's more like a pre- William Taft. Yeah, true. Ooh, but I, um, I don't know. I th- I feel like I can't think of any actors like that. You could probably. <laughs> We'll probably end up seeing uh, a Charlie Sheen. T- what was in Machete when Charlie okay. Sheen played the president? Yeah. We're probably going to get a lot of comedic actors okay. playing him. Like, we shouldn't be surprised if we see, like, a Nick DiPaolo or, right. um, oh, what's his name? Like, Anthony Camilla mm-hmm. or something like that yeah. playing, you know, a Trumpish type of president. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we can also expect to see um i don't want to say see more uh, politically incorrect movies but i think that now that hollywood knows that this is like who the country wants for president i think that there probably is going to be thankfully a lot less uh, social justice warrior mm-hmm. backlash for every like single thing like uh like if you have a movie with um I don't know, uh, a female character or a minority character or a transgender character or whatever, and let's say the character, like, fails a test or something, and then you have an SJW, it's like, what are you trying to say? Are you, are you trying to say they're stupid? Are you, they can't fail a test. That, that like, perpetuates, you know, negative view or something like Triggered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People. Uh, safe space. Yeah. <laughs> More studios will probably be able to look at that kind of stuff and go, you know what? These people really don't represent nearly as much of the mm-hmm. uh, v- our viewer base as we so, thought they did, yeah. which I which I hope for. I mean, I am hoping that we get more you know different types of uh, movies that feature you know plenty of diverse casts mm-hmm. and whatnot. But at the same time, I'm I'm hoping that everyone gets a chance to try new things. True. And as Randy Marsh would say it, I'm sorry, I thought this was America. <laughs> All right, uh, that's our show for today. Yep, that's going to be our show. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I am the Gentleman Snark. I am Flamehawk. And I am DinoCon. We are online at East Meets West, or sorry, yeah, East Meets West 917 World at Tumblr uh, and Twitter at, at Meets West and at various other places on Twitch as well. Yes, our Twitch is twitch.tv slash EMW Gaming. So if you want to see us play games, derp around, and all that kind of stuff, be sure to give us a follow us on Twitch to know when we go online. And also follow us on Twitter as we also tweet and retweet when we are going online playing games. Please support us, man. We got it. And please make sure to grab your lightsaber when you listen to us. Exactly. And slowly move it around vroom, vroom, vroom. try not to burn your hands <laughs> stay classy see ya, see ya.